Welcome you two friends and family to today's Southern edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So this morning, I have decided that the weather, if it holds cooler today, I want to do a lot of work outside and therefore I thought I better fuel up. And what better way to fuel up than my absolute favorite breakfast and actually favorite meal. What is it? Stay tuned. So I don't think it's a secret. Oh, watch out for him, Frank. He's like, I'll come and help you, my mom. That my favorite food group is gravy. And because I have struggled with high cholesterol, it is a infrequent and rare treat. But I absolutely love buttermilk biscuits with sausage gravy. So today we're going to be using my mother's quite well-worn Betty Crocker's picture cookbook and we are going to make southern style buttermilk biscuits so the first thing i've done <clears throat> is i took a one pound roll of jimmy dean hot sausage it's breakfast sausage but it's the hot and spicy and i'm frying that off on the stove and just letting it hang out i want it to caramelize develop a lot of color guys if you've ever had like bland milk gravy and you're like oh this doesn't have any taste Letting those sugars in the meat caramelize and develop and that meat brown well is one of the secrets to good gravy. So I'm gonna share all my secrets today. So what do you need? Let me tip you down here. I have things pre-measured. So we have two cups of all-purpose flour, three teaspoons, I'm sorry, two teaspoons of baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, we need six tablespoons of shortening. Now, I do not use vegetable shortening because it's soybean, which I have an allergy to, so we're gonna go get the lard, and three quarter cup of milk. So in this bowl, I've placed all my dry ingredients. I just realized, where's my lard? Let me grab that, and we'll get on to making some really good Southern style buttermilk biscuits. All so right, y'all, so, you need six tablespoons of a solid shortening. Again, I'm using lard. I've never done this with butter. Uh, not sure how that would come out, but there are a lot of uh, YouTube videos where they do use butter. I'm trying to recreate my favorite. So six tablespoons is 0.375 cups. So a generous third of a cup lard good <laughs> but like I said you can use vegetable shortening as well so at this point you should have your oven on and you want to cook this in a very hot oven in a 450 oven so my oven oops put a little flour on your leg that helps you work better for the day and what I'm using here is a pastry cutter but if you don't have one and I'm just mixing in that lard so it's going to resemble like coarse crumbs. You can certainly use like a knife and fork. I could not find this morning and I'm hungry and I've got work to do. <laughs> and the chickens were fussing to get out into their run so I had to stop and do that. Uh, I, I did not want to take the time to look for cookie cutters so we're going to do it the old fashioned way and we're going to do it like my mom and grandma always did it. And we are gonna use a glass to cut out our biscuits. So my grandma Victoria made delicious buttermilk biscuits, but my mom in the day was an absolutely fabulous cook. I can say nothing negative about my mom, pardon my reach. Sometimes when she didn't wanna rule them out, she would make drop biscuits and they were never my favorite. I. I was a purist. I wanted those rolled up biscuits. So here's what our dough, so to speak, looks like right now. And we are going to add three quarter cup of buttermilk. So 
so I purchased some buttermilk for cornbread and I still haven't made the cornbread. But since today it is a little cooler in Ohio, please Lord, <laughs> we have got the oven going, but it's early and I'm gonna be outside most of the day so the heat in the house shouldn't be a huge problem. So we're just gonna mix this together and it's gonna be a shaggy dough, it may be a little bit of a dry dough. So we're gonna turn this out and knead it here in a minute. I just wanna get it as well incorporated as I can. So a lot of people will say that, you know, I just can't bake biscuits. Y'all, it's super simple. It's pretty hard to mess up a biscuit. So I'm putting a little flour on my very clean counter and I'm just gonna dump everything out here. And we're gonna knead this into, and it comes together very easily, into a nice, very soft, but a nice dough. And if it sticks, y'all just flour up your hands. Oh, these are gonna be good. These are gonna be so good. I have not made homemade Southern style biscuits in a, in a hot minute, so I'm really looking forward to it. Use just a little bit more flour. So I would also say don't be tempted if your dough seems dry at first to add a whole bunch of liquid to it because once you start kneading it, it will come together. And you don't wanna overwork your biscuit dough. If you do, your biscuits can be tough but I've eaten my share of tough biscuits and they're still good, they're still biscuits. Now, you could roll this out, make it super smooth, but we're going for Southern style. I'm just gonna use a glass. I've got it, um, you want it between a quarter and a half inch thick. And I'm just gonna start cutting them out. Ooh, these are gonna be good, y'all. The reason you wanna go ahead and have your sausage cooked before you put your biscuits in the oven is because sausage can take a while to get that nice brown caramelized and these do not take long to bake for sure. So I'm transferring them to a cook sheet that I have lined with a what they call a silk pad. I just use the Amazon Basics version that's fine for me. Ooh, I've got plenty of biscuits. So if you've never had really good biscuits and gravy, I just wanna encourage you to try this, this way of doing it. Whenever I've gone to Cracker Barrel, and I don't hate Cracker Barrel, but not that their biscuits are bad, but their sawmill gravy is awful. <laughs> Just saying, it has that raw flour, not very good taste. This is nothing like that. I also remember when we were kids, there would always be like the leftover dough biscuit that was the odd one and we would fight over it. Does it taste any different? Uh, that would be negative. <laughs> but I don't know, I guess we thought it was special and so my sister and I would both want it. Now, how about one big mama biscuit? We'll make it a little thinner so it'll cook evenly. Oh yeah, there we go. So we have about a dozen biscuits. Our oven is ready and we're gonna go for 10 to 12 minutes. I'm gonna wash my hands, readjust the camera and we'll get started on the gravy. So my sausage has probably been cooking about 20 minutes, maybe a little longer, but as you see, it's got that nice um, caramelized brown look. One of the things about Jimmy Dean sausage is it's extremely lean and gravy. And I'm just adding some organic avocado oil. Gravy is really a combination of fat, flour, and milk. <laughs> That's why I like it so much, right? So I am going to add some flour and I want to cook that raw flour taste out. 
So that was probably four or five tablespoons. Y'all, I don't know how to tell you on that because I simply just don't measure it. But you wanna go ahead and turn your heat up to like maybe a medium high and get that raw flour taste cooked out. So it's going to make almost like a paste on your meat with the oil. And if it looks super, super dry, you can also add a little bit more oil. You just want it nice and hot so that you are cooking out that raw flour taste. Mm, guys, it's gonna be so good. <laughs> can you tell I'm excited for a little bit of gravy? So this is Wednesday where I'm filming this. Miss Violet's 21 days sitting on her eggs will be up on Monday. She is so cute with those eggs, but let me tell you, do not mess with her or her babies to be because she will peck you. So she comes out once a day, eats and drinks, and she's right back on them. We had a little coop drama the other day because she was out and Miss Marigold decided that she would sit on the eggs and she actually moved them into the laying box that she wanted to lay in. And yeah, there was a bunch of um, teenage drama going on. <laughs> All right, so our flour has had plenty of time to cook. It's sizzling and bubbly. Now we're gonna add our milk. And I just added a little bit at a time. But this will also keep you from getting lumpy gravy. My mom's gravy, she always put it in a mason jar, the flour and the milk, shook it up and just cook the gravy. I prefer it with the flour taste cooked out a little more. Not that mom's gravy wasn't good, but my grandma did it more this way. And oh my, it was so good. Now, if you salt your food, you can certainly add salt. And I'm making a lot of gravy, y'all, because this is a pound of sausage. But hey, if you're going to do it, go big or go home. You could add salt now, or you could have salted your meat. I don't um, use a lot of salt in my food. If I'm going to salt, I like to salt at the table for gravy purposes. Now, whew, Man, I'm sloppy this morning. You need a lot of black pepper if you like black pepper. I'm almost out of this shaker, but I have another one somewhere. I don't know why I'm disorganized today, but I am. And you want to bring this gravy up till it's bubbling. So you don't have to watch the pot boil I'll bring you back shortly as it starts to thicken. just checked on our biscuits and they are going to have a few more minutes. But as you see, our gravy is starting to thicken, starting to bubble. So what I'm going to do at this point, since I know I have quite a few minutes left on the biscuits, is turn my heat off. I'm going to leave it on the burner. And you do want to continuously stir it while it's on the heat so that it does not scorch we are definitely up to temp now you can make your gravy as thick or thin as you like it i like my gravy a little on the thin side if you wanted it thicker you could have added more flour if it's just entirely too thin you can try just shaking up some flour in milk in a jar and adding it in you may have to smash out some lumps but this is just about perfect show you the biscuits here in just a second. I'm going to slide this off the heat. Oops. And I'm going to cover it. One of the skills with biscuits and gravy, of course, is getting the biscuits and the gravy to come out at the same time, but I know these are not done. No. So we're going to give it three more minutes. I'll bring you back and we'll try some Southern style buttermilk biscuits with sausage gravy.
Stay tuned. Are you ready for the big reveal? Y'all. <laughs> so our gravy came out perfectly thick, piping hot. Our biscuits are lightly browned. Look at this gorgeous plate. Lots of freshly ground black pepper. Little bit of salt. Let's give it a taste. Hard not to take a big bite of this. There's no finer meal in the world. Gotta have a sip of my sweet tea. So, drop me a comment below. <clears throat> Are you gonna try some Southern style biscuits and gravy? You might start talking Southern once you taste this deliciousness. So stay tuned because we're gonna do some more things today. I'll see y'all in just a bit. So as I was washing up the dishes, I realized I didn't mention to you all that these make amazing leftovers. So generally I will put them in a baggie. You can see it's a little steamed up. I'll leave the top open until they're back to room temperature, then seal them up. To reheat them, if you're not a microwave user, you can wrap them in foil, pardon me, and warm them in the oven. The gravy, so as you see, it's thickened quite a bit as it has cooled down. So to reheat it, you can do it on a stovetop, you can do it in the microwave. You'll need to either add milk or I've even added a little bit of water. So I'm gonna leave this set out to cool and the gravy is really good like to make a um, breakfast bowl like you can find at places like bob evans with the scrambled eggs and hash browns things like that i mean gravy's good on about anything right y'all so my plan today i have to show you all this i think you'll be able to see let me well you can see my ring light let me try turning that off here uh where's the switch <clears throat> Well, it's not really doing it justice, but it looks like rain at any moment. <laughs> it's not what the Weather Channel said. Yesterday, I recorded my August, 1st of August garden tour. Yesterday was August 9th, and I was a little embarrassed by the amount of weeds when your garden gets to a certain size it's more difficult to weed just because i don't want to inadvertently pull up something stress out the roots of something so i will let it go a bit but <clears throat> this is more than a bit so i do want to do some weeding today and that would be like you watching paint dry so i'm not going to do that so right here i am going to insert my garden tour of yesterday some things that I've learned, some things that I've considered in preparation for garden planning, not only for fall, but for next spring. So I hope you'll enjoy this. I'll be back after the tour. So I thought we would start our August garden tour with a look at the green stalk. And y'all, I could not be more tickled. Now we have a lot of June bugs here in Ohio. So this is actually old damage and you can see a lot of the new growth here. Um, all of the bug bites are ceasing, but I've got some beautiful blooms. So I actually have two kinds of berries. I have some June bearing, and then I have what they call ever bearing. So where you're seeing small berries, here's a pretty one. That'll be, oh, sorry guys, we'll be ready tomorrow. So I've got a lot of berries, so I've been super tickled. I still need to order a winter cover, but I may end up with two of these because they were so, so easy. Moving on over here, <laughs> this is like chive heaven, but I am going to be dehydrating. I did let my chives go to seed and, and you can see here is a seed pod. See the seeds coming out and I'm getting new chives. So they will winter over in Ohio. So, whoa, let go. I have radishes that I am letting go to seed. Um, some will probably still get eaten, but that will give me some seed for next year. Huge spread of sage that needs to be harvested. I've got 
tons of sweet basil. Excuse my AC running in the background. Here were the extra plants, if you remember from all the peppers I planted. So these are cayenne long reds. Of course, they will turn red. <laughs> and then I've gotten some jalapenos off of this, but I'm still getting bloom, so we'll just leave that go. The cover for my veggie pod is back here. Um, it's just better so things can grow tall, etc. So come fall, I can put the cover back on and see what I can grow in the cooler temperatures. My freakishly large pepper, I'm finally, this is an orange sweet pepper. I'm finally starting to get some color, but I have never had a pepper plant this large. My lavender, if you remember, we harvested is coming back. I have quite a few of the tiny hots and a ton of rosemary. So my herbs this year, I'm going to try freeze drying. My crazy flowers, y'all. Um, it's just been one of the hottest summers here on record. Um, I do have some pretty, pretty, pretty flowers that are still going, but my petunias, my wave petunias are getting very leggy, which is extremely typical of this time of the year. This still looks pretty. <laughs> And y'all have a question, so drop me a comment below. Yes, I hear you girls. I'm sorry about the chickens too. So these are, this is sweet potato vine. Am I gonna have sweet potatoes in here? My fingers are crossed, but look at these. They're, they're going everywhere. And yeah, my little baskets are still blooming. However, they're really struggling with the heat. I do water every single day. So if you just see, take a look at my little garden here. I'm very excited. I have two more four by eight beds, which will go along the front here. And as you see, my fence is bad. I'm going to be replacing the sides, but taking out either end so I can still use the straw in the middle. Uh, I did do flowers this year and they came out really, really nice. I have quite a few and it's attracting a lot of pollinators and y'all don't come for me because I need to weed, but I'm not gonna do it in this heat. So I had a lot of problems this year with blossom rot on my pumpkins. So this is a jack-o'-lantern over here, the yellow or sugar pie, but there is some new growth on those as well. I'm trying to disturb them as least as I can. I had some really dead ones that I did remove. So yeah, I need to do some weeding. But now that it's getting a little bit cooler, uh, I need to weed y'all. Uh, I just don't wanna pull up a pumpkin. Um, I think my pumpkins are gonna do better. So look y'all, my first jack-o'-lantern that so far has not rotted, so crush fingers for me. This is a lot of times what happens. See how this one is yellow? They start to form and then they just go. I did grow in here in these two cages. I grew ground cherries this year, thinking I would really like them. I do not. The chickens do. They haven't gone to waste, but they're just not my thing. So that will be something I do differently next year. Over here. <laughs> You may be like, oh my word, you got beans that you haven't picked. So I'm trying, I've harvested a lot that I'm going to save for seed because these pole beans have done wonderfully. But I'm going to see how they dry out on the vine. I don't really know a lot about what this is all about. <laughs> but we've got some brown beans and a lot of seed beans. So happy with that. Let me just, while I'm inside the fence, show you the tomato situation. Oh, yeah. Um, so more flowers, but these I did grow from seed. These are Romas for the most part. Back here within the two yellow cages are slicing tomatoes. So I still have a lot of tomatoes, so I'm just harvesting them in small amounts, freezing them. You see, I've got a couple, they're getting really, really close. So yeah, planted them way too close together. 
next year I will spread out more but I will also have more garden space this is my sad sad corn <laughs> I have like one or two ears that so far haven't been gotten but we'll see how that goes down at this end are my cucumbers so I tried a new type this year and they're actually ah, don't fall down Kim really good but some of them are growing perfectly round and turning orange so I'm not sure what that means but they taste fine because I've eaten some so we're probably getting close to the end of cucumbers I harvested the peas but y'all look at my zucchini look that is three green zucchini plants and then back here this is a yellow um that one pretty much got strangled out but i'm getting a lot of zucchini and again the rest of my beans i'm really curious why these are brown if you know drop me a comment this is the first year i've grown this type of bean all right the last area i have been leaving my herbs go to seed so this is mint and lemon balm this has been great for attracting the bees and i believe it has helped my pumpkins this whole bed is cayenne long reds as well as jalapenos and i have harvested a lot and i have a lot more coming so definitely happy with the peppers might be a little crowded i've got some asparagus here that's where onions were it's all weeds now some banana peppers so all in all um pretty pleased with the effort i put forth this year to make a garden miss violet do you want to tell the people about your babies that are coming huh you got some babies coming you see how poofed up she is you're fine you don't need to come in here miss marigold her um fur will get really big not fur feathers when she feels threatened you can just stop being nosy miss marigold yeah they get very curious when i open the side door about what's going on what are you telling the people jolene you got a big mouth that's what you're telling the people and over here ouch is fancy ray yes hello girly girls so of course when the chicks hatch i will be sharing with you <laughs> what's going on she's just being plain old nosy because <clears throat> it's too early for laying time i know today's video has been a little bit of this and a little bit of that but you know it's it's life with chickens and garden and home cooking all good stuff i check the radar i look like i'm gonna be okay even though it's extremely cloudy it's mercifully cooler. Y'all do not like the heat. And I had a problem with my air conditioner, central air. Um, I thought it wasn't handling the humidity and that's why it was leaking. No, it had a clog in the exit tube from the evaporator tray to the drain. And so I watched him do it in case it happens again. I think I could do it, but I had not a clue what to do. So $129 later, it's repaired. And y'all might notice, I don't have my Fitbit. So my Fitbit, which was recalled, finally bit the dust. So Apple Watch on the way, finally. So kind of always seems like it's something. So I want to leave you with a couple thoughts today. I never want to be an alarmist, but I do want to be realistic y'all we don't know what the future holds you know think back before co before the pandemic we almost said a bad word and in our lifetimes we never thought that would happen i remember when i was in nursing school uh, around 1980 we had a tb outbreak in the area where i was going to, to college and doing my nurses training and we thought that was just terrible you know and they had uh, reverse, reverse um, air rooms. I forget what they're called now. And, you know, everybody kind of was in fear that they were going to develop TB. And then along came the pandemic. You know, we're hearing a lot about 
what's going on with shipping, what's going on with unrest in other countries. So I just want to encourage you all, be mindful of putting some extra things away as you can afford. If you are doing the Every Bit Counts Challenge, what I want to share with you is that has made a huge difference in my creativity. I've come up with a couple things I'm going to be doing for next, but I'm trying to do it all in one video for you <clears throat> for next week's that are totally new to me, new preservation methods. We'll do it together and see if it works. Um, a big shout out to um, Jessica over at, oh my goodness, Three Rivers Homestead for creating this challenge because it couldn't be more timely given what's going on. So have faith, don't worry, but be prepared. I will see you all again next week unless I pop up with a chick video. A couple of you have asked what I'm gonna do with the chicks. So I will share my look, I will get two roosters. I do not want a rooster, although they're very good for the chickens you know, being a protector, etc. I do not want to deal with broody hens. I do not want to deal with baby chicks. Um, I'm past that phase of life <laughs> with my child being 37, almost 38. Yeah, I just, uh, it's, it's like high school drama in the coop all the time. So, or maybe elementary school drama. So the lady that did give me the fertilized eggs has agreed to take the chicks. If I get one, at least one little female chick, I might keep her. So that would round me out to five. Kind of depends on <clears throat> their barred rock eggs, but we don't know what they were crossbred with. So it may not be a, it may be a mutt chick and that's okay. I'm not prejudiced against, um, they don't have to be purebred to suit, suit me. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. But my honest plan is to return the chicks from whence the eggs came. All right, I will see you all very soon. In the meantime, be healthy. Oh wait, smash the like button, subscribe, share, all those things, y'all. I get tired of saying it, but I hope you know that it does give you a reminder. So be healthy, be well, be blessed. Take care, I'll see you real soon.